This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to southern Arizona, where a humanitarian aid volunteer is heading to trial today for providing food, water and shelter to two undocumented migrants. Scott Warren of Ajo, Arizona, faces up to 20 years in prison after being charged with three felony counts for allegedly harboring undocumented migrants. Warren is a geographer who volunteers with No More Deaths and Ajo Samaritans, two southern Arizona-based humanitarian aid organizations. For years, the groups have left water and food in the harsh Sonoran Desert to help refugees and migrants survive the deadly journey across the U.S. border. Warren was arrested January 17, 2018, just hours after No More Deaths released a report detailing how U.S. border agents had intentionally destroyed more than 3,000 gallons of water left out for migrants crossing the border. The group also published a video showing border agents dumping out jugs of water in the desert. Hours after the report was published, authorities raided Warren's home in Ajo, where they found two migrants who'd sought temporary refuge. Amnesty International and other human rights groups are now calling for the charges to be dropped against Warren. In a moment, Scott Warren will join us from Tucson. But first, I want to turn to a short documentary by Laura Sanders for The Intercept about the work of humanitarian aid workers, including Warren, on the border. It's titled, Let Them Have Water. We savor our desert, but this desert right around our town, where we recreate, housed 57 bodies, 57 remains of human beings last year. 57. Do you find remains in your parks, in your golf courses, in your neighborhood playgrounds? What would that make you feel like? May the spirits of our brothers and sisters walk in beauty for eternity. Thank you, Creator. I'm Scott Warren, and I'm a geographer. And I've lived in Ajo for about six years now. The moment that really changed for me, got me involved in a big way, was moving here to Ajo and just experiencing the border in a more visceral way, being here in the summer, running into people in the desert who had walked across the desert and were in need of water, meeting other folks who were, who were doing humanitarian aid. Uh, it just seemed like, if not the most important, one of the most important issues facing this place for me, to not be involved in that would be like not being fully engaged and fully present in this place. So groups like No More Deaths and Samaritans, Humane Borders, Aguilas del Desierto and the Armadillos, for instance, uh, have all provided humanitarian aid and done search and rescue in different ways here in the desert. We went from finding human remains every other month to like finding five sets of human remains uh, on, a, on a single trip, hiking through the Growler Valley. Uh, and then going back you know, a week later and finding uh, two more sets of remains. And then on a single day of searching, finding like eight sets of remains and bodies of people who had died in adjacent areas of the bombing range and on Cabeza Prieta. So just this like scale of this crisis, of the humanitarian crisis and the missing persons crisis just blew wide open. My name is Cesar Ortigosa, and I'm the president, the president of Armadillo Search and Rescue. We've been doing this for almost six years. We're planning on sticking together for a long time. You know, this, this work is really necessary for for uh, the families that are in need of uh, our help. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to La Muela right now. ¿A dónde van? ¿A La Muela? La Muela, yeah, we're searching for a guy that was left out there. What, you're searching for a body? Yeah. Uh-huh. Is it just one that you know of, or? Yeah, well, it, there is three, three actually. Three? You okay. know, but one of them is the more recent. You know, so, and it's um, really... We hope to find, find them today. It's really grateful to have all these, these people, these volunteers, because uh, we might belong to different families. We were not, 
might not even be related to each other. But inside here, we, sh we have to be a family, you know. In your hands, Lord, we ask this morning that you help us reach the place where the people that need your help are. Father, we ask this so that we can help them as it is the mission we carry in our hearts. We just have to be realistic and and know that uh, we have to be strong, you know, it, even though it, it breaks our hearts to, to find these remainings, we have to be strong and keep on going, you know, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to do this job. About three months ago, we found the remains from a little boy or girl, probably five, six years old. And then it's really sad to think one, what they had to go through and how they died. And knowing that uh, their families won't be able to see them anymore, it's, it's, it's really, really hard. You know, but we have to keep on doing it. You know, it's really necessary. Our responsibility is to just to give them, give them the, uh, the coordinates and once they, once they have it, that's really up to them if... I was arrested by the Border Patrol and charged with harboring. In the Border Patrol criminal complaint against me, they said that um, I was providing food, water, beds, and clean clothes to, to two men. And so they charged me with harboring. Went through Border Patrol custody, then appeared in front of a judge and was released on my own recognizance. And uh, that was over a year ago, and we've been engaged in various legal proceedings uh, leading up to a potential trial sometime later this year. I'm Mimi Phillips. I moved to Ajo about 15 years ago. And um, about eight or nine years ago, a group of us began a small version of the Samaritans here. I guess every time I look at Scott, I think of my own son. And it's unconscionable to think that he's been charged with felonies for doing what, as a parent, I would be so proud. where you say enough you know whatever the consequences are enough um, drivers with permits should come together to be able to approach law enforcement and everyone else how many more bodies it's just not okay you know we're here and we will leave the water and we are a real community that isn't a scary place to live I think one important thing is that people here in Ajo and other local communities in the border have always been providing humanitarian aid and have always responded to people being in need. 
people here have, you know, um, provided food and water to folks who are crossing the desert who are in desperate condition. Uh, they have responded to rescue people who are in the desert. They've found and recovered the bodies and the bones of people who have died in the desert. So that's been going on for forever, basically, and it's, it has been a fact of life for people who live here. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. I want to start off by saying who I am. I'm Jose Castillo, and I've been around here for almost 80 years. We honor these individuals today with the reading of their names. Please respond with presente when the name is called. Desconocido. Presente. Let Them Have Water, a short documentary by Laura Sanders for The Intercept. We're joined now in Tucson, Arizona, by Scott Warren, the humanitarian aid volunteer who's heading to trial today for providing aid to two undocumented migrants. He faces up to 20 years in prison after being charged with three felony counts for allegedly harboring undocumented migrants. He was arrested in January 2018 at a location called The Barn, which was used by humanitarian volunteers. Warren is a geographer who volunteers with No More Deaths and Ajo Samaritans. We're also joined in Tucson by another member of No More Deaths, Catherine Gaffney. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Uh, Scott, why don't you lay out what happened on that day in January 2018, uh, when you were at the barn, as well as other volunteers? Um, explain who exactly raided and what happened to you there. Thanks. Um, I was at the barn, which is a property in Ajo that's used by a variety of uh, huma <coughs> excuse me, humanitarian groups um, that uh, stage, stage from that property to go out into the desert and um, uh, put out water and do search and rescue and that sort of thing. Um, on that day uh, in uh, uh, January of 2018, um, we were uh, preparing for a group of high school students to arrive uh, who were going to volunteer to um, do some of this humanitarian work. It's a pretty common thing um, that uh, student groups will volunteer. And um, uh, on that day, uh, a couple of um, Border Patrol agents had set up surveillance um, uh, kind of across the, the way from the barn uh, in an area where they could kind of watch what was happening there. Um, and at some point, uh, they uh, said that they saw me speaking with um, two men um, who they uh, somehow determined to be uh, illegally present uh, in the United States. Uh, and so they set up kind of an operation to um, raid, the, raid the barn um, through what they called a knock and talk operation. Uh, and so about 5.30, uh, late in the afternoon, early evening, uh, kind of a convoy of uh, Border Patrol and uh, Sheriff's Deputy vehicles uh, entered the barn, the property there, um, and at that point I uh, uh, had informed them that they were on private property uh, and they didn't have a right to be there, uh, and they persisted uh, and sort of uh, um, went to the entrance of the barn, um, and by the time I kind of arrived at the, the entrance where they were uh, uh, kind of uh, looking uh, inside the building, uh, they had already had uh, uh, these two men uh, who were, um, they determined to be uh, illegally present in the country, um, and they were sort of detaining them. Uh, and then at that point, they uh, informed me that they were going to arrest me uh, and that I was being arrested for harboring. And, and Scott, I wanted to ask you about this. Uh, most people who are not familiar with uh, uh, your part of the country uh, don't realize that the Arizona desert area is the the, the most deadly place for migrants, and uh, about what 38 to 40 percent of all the deaths along the border occur uh, in in the desert areas of Arizona. Yeah, um, Arizona, along with South Texas, are two of the, the worst areas, really, um, where we're finding uh, uh, the most—the uh, highest numbers of people who have died crossing the border. 
Um, those numbers that you reference are really disturbing, but um, they're just the, the numbers of bodies uh, and human remains that we have found in the desert. So we assume that there are many more. Um, all across Arizona, uh, there are many people who, who die in the desert, who have died in the desert. Uh, the particular area where I live, uh, often called the Ajo Corridor, is in southwestern Arizona, and um, it's particularly brutal. Uh, many, many people have died there, uh, and this is the area on parts of Oregon Pipe Cactus National Monument and in Cabeza Prieta National Wildlife Refuge and the Barry Goldwater Bombing Range. Uh, where we have increasingly been finding um, uh, many, many bodies and bones of people who have died while crossing the desert. And, and ironically, southern Arizona, uh, it was really the center of the copper industry, the state of Arizona for the entire United States. And for decades, uh, uh, migrant Mexicans from Mexico were the ones who worked in, in many of these mines, weren't they? And they were, they were legal then to come and work in the mines, but now are suddenly considered, uh, uh, in, the, in recent decades, uh, illegal uh, to be able to come into the country. That's, yeah, that's a really interesting point that you bring up. Uh, where I live, Ajo, it's a, it's a former copper mining town, a former company town. Uh, everything was controlled by the company. Uh, everybody who came in and, and went out uh, sort of had to be vetted by the company. Uh, throughout much of the 20th century, particularly early in the 20th century, it was really these copper companies that determined uh, who, who came and, and who went. Uh, and they were the ones that sort of dictated the nature of the border and sort of who was allowed to be there. Uh, so it's really fascinating to me to look at how, even though so much has changed, you know, my town is no longer a copper mining town. The mine closed in the 80s. It's very much uh, a post-industrial economy. Um, but in that, uh, that void, the, the post-industrial void, we've had this massive growth of the border security industry. Um, it's, it's enormous, enormous across southern Arizona, across all of the border. And by, by all measures, it looks like it's going to continue growing. Scott Warren, let's talk about the timing of the raid in January of 2018. Just hours after No More Deaths, your organization released a report detailing how U.S. border agents had intentionally destroyed more than 3,000 gallons of water left out for migrants crossing the border. The group also published a video that showed uh, border agents dumping out jugs of water in the desert. Explain the significance of this, the timing, that same day. This was a report released by No More Deaths um, on the, uh, uh, the morning that I was arrested. And the uh, report was the, the second in a, a series of reports called the Disappeared series. Um, and this particular report looked at how— yeah. um, Humanitarian uh, aid supplies left in the desert were being destroyed uh, by Border Patrol agents. And there was a whole report that was associated with that and um, uh, a pretty detailed analysis that you mentioned. Uh, the things that really went viral were a couple of those videos, the trail cam videos and others that showed um, agents destroying water and, and dumping out water. Uh, so this happened on the, the morning. Um, of my arrest and um, through various me uh, measures now we've we've learned more of that story um, but uh, uh, the report was released that morning and then um, uh, agents set up surveillance uh, on the barn that afternoon and then um, arrested me that evening and uh, I'd also like to ask Catherine Gaffney, uh, you're a volunteer with No More Deaths. Could you talk about the crackdown on people who are trying to assist some of the migrants uh, for humanitarian purposes? Uh, I think Syracuse University's uh, Transactional Records Access Clearinghouse revealed the report that there's been a 30 percent increase since 2015 in the number of people arrested annually, uh, allegedly for harboring or assisting uh, undocumented migrants. But that's nationwide. What have you been seeing? 
That's right. And this is really a somber moment for us as we uh, go to trial today. Um, Scott is being prosecuted for, um, as you mentioned, providing food, water, clean clothes and beds to two people who asked him for help. So um, what we've seen in No More Deaths uh, recently is really an escalation of a longstanding war on the lives of undocumented migrants and undocumented communities in this country. Um, the crisis of deaths and disappearances on the border has been ongoing. Um, there's more than 7,000 known deaths in the last uh, two decades, and as Scott said, that's a vast undercounting of the true number of people who have died or gone missing. But what we've really seen in the last several years is a ramping up of attacks, not only directly on the lives of undocumented people crossing through the border, but also on those who um, make it their work to stop and help people and try to prevent the, these deaths and suffering. And that's not only um, through humanitarian aid groups such as No More Deaths and the many other um, search and rescue and humanitarian aid groups that work in the borderlands, but frankly, on you know the the daily lives of many people in the borderlands for whom it's a normal occurrence for someone to come knock on your door um, asking for a glass of water or asking for help. Um, so when we see the expansion of the harboring statutes to criminalize such basic acts of human care, um, it's really a concerning uh, interpretation of those statutes. It sort of leads to the conclusion that, um, you know, if you're sitting down at the table with your family member who is undocumented and, and you know, has a different status than you, do you need to check their papers before you pass them the bread? If you invite a neighbor over for a barbecue, you know, do you need to set up a checkpoint before you can share food or water with before them? Before we end, I wanted to ask Scott, you go on trial today. Amnesty has called for all charges to be dropped. A judge has refused to drop the charges. Your defense today. Um, well, we'll be really, um, uh, over the, the coming week and a half, it really outlining our case um, about uh, the, the necessity and the need for humanitarian aid uh, and the clear, the clear right, morally, ethically, spiritually, and legally, to give and receive humanitarian aid uh, anywhere and particularly in the, the borderland region. So uh, we want to thank you both, we're but forth. we're going to continue with part two at democracynow.org. Scott Warren on trial today with No More Deaths and Catherine Gaffney, activist and volunteer with No More Deaths. Thank you so much for joining us from Tucson. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.